chamber of the right atrium pumps blood into the right ventricle through this tricuspid orifice which is guarded by tricuspid valve. To have a look of the interior of the right ventricle, we will make an incision and cut open the anterior wall of the right ventricle and the incision pass just below the beginning of pulmonary trunk right to the interventricular groove and I modify the incision to avoid the anterior papillary muscle. After making this incision, I reflect this anterior wall to the right. The interior of the anterior wall of the right ventricle has loads of irregular projections and the interior is divided into an inflowing part which is having numerous trabeculae carnae. This trabeculae carnae is further divided into ridges, bridges and pillars. Together they make a rough part which helps to dam the turbulent flow of blood rushing from right atrium to the right ventricle. And this smooth part is outflowing part which helps to pump blood from the chamber of the right ventricle. When you see the inflowing part, you can see anterior papillary muscle, the posterior papillary muscle and septal papillary muscle. The anterior papillary muscle is usually one in number. The posterior papillary muscle may be two or more. The septal papillary muscle are the smallest and they are numerous in number. This papillary muscle gives attachment to small thread-like structures named as chordae tendinae. It gives attachment to the respective cusp. And this outflowing part is smooth and that inflowing part and the outflowing part is separated by the supraventricular ridge. This outflowing part continues as the pulmonary trunk which is guarded by pulmonary semilunar valve. This is the septomarginal trabecula otherwise named as the moderator band which transmits the right branch of the bundle of his from the interventricular septum to the base of the anterior papillary muscle. Now to see the interior of the left ventricle, I'll make a vertical incision like this. Readily you can appreciate the difference of the thickness of the wall of the right ventricle and the wall of the left ventricle. The wall of the left ventricle is much thicker than the wall of the right ventricle. There you can see the anterior papillary muscle and the posterior papillary muscle which also gives attachment to this caudate tendinae attached to the free margin of the corresponding cusps of the bicuspid valve which guards the orifice between the left atrium and the left ventricle. The interior of the left ventricle also presents these numerous ridge-like structures which helps to dam the turbulent flow of blood from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Now to see the interior of the left atrium, I will open this cavity of the left atrium. Most of the part which is smooth because it is developed from the absorbed part of the sinus venosus. We had previously seen the interatrial septum. So this is the interatrial septum, the limbus fossa ovalis and the fossa ovalis and that forms the, that is the opposite side of the interatrial septum. This is the view from the left atrium. So that is the, that was the part of the fossa ovalis.